Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It really helps. As you can see on the screen right now, uh, these are the two testers we looked at in the last two videos. So this is what I have, and this is the latest and greatest gizmo that I have the, um, in this field. And I absolutely love it. And today we're going to talk about this. So I'm just going to take away the old stuff from my uh, table. And we are going to talk about this device called the Power Z. It's made by a company called Charger Lab, and this particular model is the KM003C. Uh, it has the HID port that we saw in the previous two uh, devices, but this one is USB-C instead of micro USB. And then we have a four button uh, navigation interface, and this is what the keys do. Let me bring it closer so you can see forward, backwards, selection. Uh, sorry, my bad. So forward and left and right. Uh, so OK, and then one step back. So these are the way you navigate this device. All right, so I'm going to plug the HID port. So by the way, the same HID port can be used to connect it to the computer. And this one also has a computer app. This model that I have does not have Bluetooth. I'm not sure if they make one that has Bluetooth. But yeah, you can use this port to provide an auxiliary power like I'm about to do right now, or you can use it to connect to the computer. And the computer app is actually quite well featured. This device, by the way, has the G sensor that we saw in the U2, and you can use it to rotate any way, any which way you like. So we're going to go through the pages. This device has a much, much better navigation uh, and the menu design than the last one we looked at, the uh, use uh, T66C. So this one is much, much better than that. So we're just going to go through the pages. This one is a graph, and then you have uh, the settings and the uh, advanced um, functionality pages. We'll come back to this page in a few moments. And then here you can uh, use the data logging functionality to, to collect data about the, the charging curves and the capacities of batteries and whatnot. All right, let's delve a bit deeper into uh, the advanced functions. First of all, you have this uh, charging protocol page. So this allows you to test your chargers you can plug this directly into a charger without a cable and in that case uh, you can tell it to spoof or uh, simulate that it has uh, an e-marker chip built in so this is the cable simulation menu you can tell the charger it doesn't have e-marker so that's when it will be limited to 60 watts you can tell the charger that the, and the cable that this is trying to simulate is capable of 100 watts 240 and a bunch of others so i usually leave it at 240 because that gives me the maximum um, capability but yeah we can use uh, the testing uh, so it's saying be ready let's look at the other two pages before we get into that so it has a bunch of advanced modules it can read the USB uh, e-marker chip from the cables so uh, it can check if a char Apple charger is uh, genuine uh, it can detect the ripple voltage so ripple voltage is the variation in the voltage level that a uh, charger is providing co chargers have a um, smaller number of ripple so ripple is the deviation from the set voltage so if the charger is a good of a good quality it will give you exactly the voltage you need and a small amount of noise but not a lot so this can measure that noise and then uh, these are the extender tools you can measure the cable resistance a good quality cable should have a little as little resistance as possible and then you can check if uh, a lightning uh, cable has the MFI certification or the chip inside it. So let's look at the USB E marker. So I'm going to bring back the 100 watt USB PD capable charger and the cable. This cable does have an E marker chip that goes up to 240 watts. So let's see what does it say. There we go. This cable can support 50 volts at 5 amps and up to 240 watts. And this is, by the way, a USB 4 cable, 40 gigabits per second. I think it also supports Thunderbolt 4, though I might be wrong on that. But yeah, it has a bunch of extra information. Now let's go back to the juicy stuff. Charging protocol. Be ready. And I'm going to ask it to see the, all the protocols that this charger and the cable combo can support. So let's give it a few moments. Depending on what kind of phone you have, some phones will support AFC, that's Samsung. Some would support FCP. I'm not sure which brands do that. Quick Charge 3.0 used to be a very popular thing, supported by different uh, Android manufacturers before they moved over to uh, the PD, power delivery standard. 
but this uh, the power delivery as far as I understand it is usually quick, uh, uh, backwards compatible with quick charge 3 and 2 uh, here it's checking for MediaTek uh, fast charge so there we go it's telling me that the charger that I have plugged into this device is capable of these protocols and you will get more information once you tap tap into uh, the individual um, colors as you can see the interface on this device is much much better than the last one we looked at and there's a reason for that it's it's a much new device so that could be why it's able to have a much better interface and here is our power delivery inter um, trigger interface I can switch between the fixed voltages and I can go into the power, uh, programmable power supply mode uh, in the uh, green bar above right here so this is giving you the real-time readout of the voltage current and the wattage because nothing is plugged into the output side so right now it's reading 0 watts and 0 amperes but yeah if anything would have been plugged on the other side it would show me exactly what's going on all right here are the other options here now we're back to the top by the way the other devices that we looked at they did not have this small ui element that you can go back to the top once you reach the last um, item in the list this is such an underrated feature but, but i really miss it in the devices that don't have it so let's go back here and look at the vbus triple it's doing the measurement let's give it a few moments there you go you see it, it's telling you even though right now it's not a fair way to measure ripple because we don't have a load on the other side what it's telling me that it's um, it's get, seeing a ripple at two kilohertz on um, which is up to about two millivolts here i can change the resolution so i'm basically telling you to take more samples uh, up to eight megahertz and you see it's picking up it a bit, a bit more ripple than before Uh, by the way, uh, just looking at this page, you can change the refresh frequency of the data that you see here. Right now it's 50 samples per second. Then you have 1000 samples, then 2 samples, 10 and 50. I usually leave it at 10, that's more than enough for what I need it for. But yeah, you can change that. So yeah, this has been one of my favorite and one of my most favorite gadgets when it comes to testing power supplies and a USB uh, power delivery uh, chargers. And the best part about this is, I don't need to use a cable to test the charger. Some of the char and some of these devices uh, absolutely need you to have the cable before you can test the charger. So this one, you can use it without the a cable. Secondly, you don't need the HID cable uh, or the HID power to test the charges directly. So uh, it has a capacitor on the inside. That's why you saw it uh, counting down and, and it, um, it basically allows it to save the data if you plug it in, plug it out of the charger unexpectedly. So if you wanted to test a charger, you would basically take this protective boot off. You would plug it into your charger. You would hold this button and this tells the device that it's safe to power on and there's a power delivery capable device on the other side and then the ch charger would basically give it anything that this device uh, device would ask for in the cable simulation mode so yeah i think that's the reason the other other devices don't do that that they, you cannot just plug them directly into the charger and the chargers won't power up properly beyond the five volts uh, because it's not safe to do so this one can trick the chargers into providing the full power that it's capable of it might not be safe but because i'm doing testing on these chargers so i like the feature that i don't have to have another cable plugged here just so that i can test the charger it kind of defeats the purpose if i wanted to have the cable plugged into here then i would just plug the cable into the charger and plug it here why do i need the cable so yeah that rubbed me the wrong way so i absolutely love this if you guys need to see any specific details that i might, might have missed in this video because i know this is capable of a lot more please let me know because this is able to capture usb power delivery protocol uh, communication you need a computer to do that yeah, you can see hid port but yes the software is free on the computer side so yeah it's been really good using this i'll see you guys in the next video take care bye